himself. All I really needed to know is one sentence here. His mission says, I believe, as I'm sure all of us do, that our community's greatest assets are not this school building, but the students themselves. So that tells me everything I need to know about the speaker and why they're here for us today. So join me in welcoming Mr. Dabbs to the stage. Hey, how's everybody doing? I left, look, she did really good. I'm not that professional. Here it is. My name is Reggie. I just got you out of class. Everybody clap for the black man. I got you out of class. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I left, left, left. I got to be honest, I'm not from Kentucky, so we say hi different. I'm from South Florida, so do me a favor. I'm going to show you how. Look at somebody left or right. Stare them in the eye and just say, all right, all right, all right. Turn to the person on the other side of me. Do it again. Say, all right, all right, all right. All right, everybody, one more time. Look at a teacher by you and say, all right, all right, all right. All right, I gotta make fun of a teacher. Sir, stand up right now. Look at the students and say, all right, all right, all right. Give them a hand, y'all. Give them a hand. That's good. That's good. So do me a favor. Do me a favor. Shout for your grade level. I gotta find out who in here. Who in here? Is there anybody in the eighth grade? Eighth grade. Where's seventh grade? Word. Hey, look at me. Before I do this, you may want to plug your ears. Sixth grade. Where's sixth grade? Word. Y'all didn't get it, right? It's like eighth grade. Yeah. Seventh grade. Yeah. Sixth grade. Yeah. And don't worry. It'll go down when you get older. You'll be like this. Let me get that out. Today, I got two minutes to convince you to listen to me. So here's what I'm gonna do, my middle school brothers and sisters. I'm going to give you the meaning of life, right here, right now. There are two things in life you must always remember. Let's get started. Number one, always remember this. Boys and girls are different. <laughs> there it is right there, there it is, there it is, there it is. Now wait, wait, wait. Some of you are going, uh-uh, mama said we all the same. Look at me. Your mama wrong, all right? Now look, there are four ways boys and girls are different. I'm going to give them all to you right now. If I'm right, clap for me. If I'm wrong, don't boo me. If you boo me, I'll come over there and sit on you and your mama never see you again, all right? Now wait. Some of you are like, ooh, let's boo it. It'll be fun. No, it won't. First thing will happen, it'll be an eclipse. Every day go dark, all right? After that, all you want to hear is like, you gone. Next thing you'll see is Jesus, Buddha, or Muhammad saying, come home, my child. It'll be over, all right? So here we go. Boys and girls are different. Number one, let's start easy. If one girl got to go to the bathroom, two girls, Get to go with it. Clap your hands, everybody. Okay? Some of you teachers were a little nervous, weren't you? It's all right. <laughs> Number two. Oh, by the way, let me explain. I'll explain. You know why that's true? You ain't never seen a brother jump up in math class and go, ooh, I gotta go. Hey, Steve. Let's go pee pee. Hey, how many? <laughs> Somebody look at your neighbor and say, he right? <laughs> Number two. Boys and girls are different. Listen, I'm just going to tell you. Anybody ever notice? Women sneeze pretty. Women are like, right? If a brother sneeze, you better run. And women cry pretty. Men cry ugly. When a brother really cries, it's like, clap your hands. That's number two. Look at your neighbor and say, you right? Number three, I'm just going to say it. Women can drive cars better than men. Clap your hands. Women can drive better than men. Why are you going? You in the eighth grade, you ride a bicycle. Shut up, okay? I'll 
come up here, I'll belly flop you. I ain't playing, all right? Let me explain. It goes like this. A woman got a brand new car. Oh, did you hear that? A woman got a brand new car. No, 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 no. Hey, let's wrap this one. Let's wrap this one. A woman got a brand new car. Hey, she really can't drive very far. She forgot to put gas in her car. Now a brother gonna steal her car. A woman will wreck her car to save a cat running across the road. A man will wreck his car trying to kill that sucker running across the road. Clap your hands, that's number three. Look at you, neighbor. You know what to say. You say, you right. Number four. I'm sorry, number four. I forgot where I was. Number four. Anybody in this room ever get up in the morning and get your toothbrush and your toothpaste and go to put it in your mouth and the toothpaste falls off? Girls, what do you do, girls? Wash it out of the sink, get more toothpaste, start over. Boys, what do we do? Scoop it up. That's all we do. Come on, let me hear all the brothers say, scoop it up. Who cares if your daddy shaved that morning? Scoop it up anyway, bro. Go to school, you got hair on your teeth. Nasty, that's what you are. Number one, boys and girls are different. Clap your hands, everybody. There it is. Number two, now wait, my middle school brothers and sisters, before I do the meaning of life, number two, I must be honest with you and let you know, we're going to play a game. See, that's why I like sixth grade right there. I thought we are going to play a game. Sixth grade, like, whoop, whoop. Eighth grade, like, your mama playing a game. <laughs> Everybody say, what you know? That's the name of the game. What you know? Now let me explain how the game goes. It's real simple. Everybody in this gym, you got music that you listen to. When you're going to school, when you go home from school, when you're at home from school, you got music. Everybody likes music. So we're going to go down memory lane and play some of the songs you guys love. Now listen very carefully. It's real simple. All you have to do is listen to the verse. When each song gets to the chorus, all you got to do as an entire school is sing. As loud as you can, sing. If you can't sing, sing anyway, because that's funny, all right? So now look, everybody look at your neighbor and say, you better sing. Look at your other neighbor and say, I ain't playing with you. So cool. Everybody please welcome my friend, DJ Marky Mark. He's right over there in the corner right there. going to help us out. Now here's why you listen to the verse and then sing the chorus. Just so you can know, I'm not just a speaker. I'm also a professional saxophone player. And this is a soprano saxophone. So I play the verse, y'all sing the chorus. Are y'all ready? Everybody look at your neighbor and say, so glad I'm not in class right now. <laughs> Let's get this party started. Go ahead, Marky Mark, get that person. Song number one, I'm gonna give it to you. Bruno Mars. His hit said, You're amazing just the way you are. All right? Here we go.
everybody clap your hands. Don't stop. All right, we got a little slow motion. Everybody say, hey. Group or 
company called the National Football League work. I am the motivational speaker, one of 10 men for the National Football League, which means all 32 teams, at least here we speak twice every year, but for the past 15 years, I've been selected to speak to the two teams that make it to the Super Bowl. So that's cool. Everybody say, who are you? Okay, NBA, basketball, right? I was the motivational speaker for the Miami Heat. Then I became the motivational speaker for the Cleveland, Cla the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's all I can say. But now I'm the motivational speaker for the Los Angeles Lakers. If you have, if you know basketball, I don't need to say nothing else. You know the player that makes sure that I'm with him wherever he plays. And it's cool to be at court in middle school today. Clap your hands if you're glad you made it. Everybody say, who are you? I just told you. All right, so see, that's it. That's all I got right there. That's all I got. Now, everybody say, where are you from? Now, I know every English teacher is cringing right now because I'm destroying the English language, but okay, I, I was born and raised in Knoxville, Tennessee. I had the privilege and honor, and I see a little girl with the greatest hoodie ever in the world on. I played football at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, no balls. So good job, girl. Good job. Be real. All right. All right. So here's the deal. Everybody say, where are you from? Now, everybody look at me. I wish I could joke the whole time, but I cannot. And unfortunately, when they ask me to tell you where I'm from, I need four minutes and 30 seconds. But before I do that, I need you to look at me. With this many kids in a room, somebody in this gym is going to identify with who I am and where I'm from. If you are that kid who identifies with what I'm about to say, I need to say two things to you. Number one, don't you ever give up. Because if I can make it, you can too. And number two, forget me. I'm so sorry. I don't want anybody to grow up like me. But in a room this big, I know you can. So give me four minutes and 30 seconds. And I'll tell you where I'm from. I was in the first grade, first grade. I went to school one day and the bell rang. When I looked up at what we call the chalkboard, my name was on the chalkboard. You know you in trouble when your name is on the chalkboard, okay? But not just mine, but then I realized everybody else's name. Mine was the first. When the bell rang, I said, excuse me, why is my name up there? And the teacher said, tomorrow is one of the greatest days in school history. Tomorrow is parent-teacher conference. Listen to me. Does anybody know what that means, parent-teacher conference? Good. Then watch this. I hate that day. If you hate that day, clap your hands. I hate that day. Ooh, I got teachers clapping. That's my favorite teacher right there. My name was first. Teacher said, your mom and dad are coming right after lunch tomorrow. When you're on the playground, when you see your parents lined up at the door, I get five minutes with your parents. Didn't you get to go home. I, I didn't say nothing. When I got home, I said nothing. I hope they forgot. And they didn't say nothing to me. So I thought they forgot until after lunch when we went to the playground. They were there. <laughs> we spoke. It was over. The teacher said, Reggie, you can go home with your mom and dad. When we walked outside, that's when it happened. Everybody said, what happened? What happened? I noticed something. All my friends were with their parents. All my friends' parents were young. But my parents are like, oh, and I'm thinking, why they old? But I didn't say it out loud. You don't say stuff like that out loud. You got to wait for the right time. So we get in the car, we're going home. I'm in the back seat, they're in the front seat. Right time. So I yell to the front seat, hey, why y'all old? <laughs> don't ever do that. Look at me. If your people old, keep it to yourself, OK? When we got home, my dad said, we got to talk. So they put me at the kitchen table to have a talk. Anybody ever been to the kitchen table to have a talk? If you haven't, don't go. If you don't smell food, run, girl, run, OK? <laughs> when we sit down, my dad started. My dad said, son, there's a plan for your life. I said, yes, sir. 
My mom looked at me and said my favorite word. My mom said, baby. I like that. <laughs> okay, I know y'all gonna laugh at me, but when I was little, I thought my mom was magic. Every time she said baby, my darkest night had light, my cloudiest day had sunshine. No matter what I was going through, I'm gonna make it. Because mama said baby. I know, y'all looking at me like big old black man love his mama. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Clap your hands if you love your mom. Good job, good job. Now everybody go, everybody hit your neighbor and say, that ain't bad. Hit your other neighbor and say, what's up with that? Everybody look at me and say, where's the bad part? Okay, you asked. I like to make it a little lighter, but I'll be honest with you. Where we're going with this, there's no easy way to say it. My mom said, baby, I'm sorry. And she started crying. My mama cried so hard that my dad moved chairs and he held my mom for 10 minutes until she calmed down. Once my mom calmed down, my dad said, tell him, tell him, tell him. Hey, by the way, everybody get ready. Teachers, faculty, student aides, they are fine. She can stay, she can make as much noise. It's all good with me. I know some of you are like, some of you know who I'm, who I'm talking about and what I'm talking about, but you listen to me. I'll explain it because you need to know now. If you ever get the honor or privilege of meeting someone who's different than you, always treat with respect, love, and honor. And here's why. It could have been me. I see kids in wheelchairs every time I do schools, and I honor them, and I thank them for letting me be at their school. We don't respect anymore. And I know I'm old. That's probably why I am who I am today. Can I give you a phrase that sounds weird? I might be doing this for teachers back in the Saturday. Do you know why I'm so popular? Do you know why everybody loves me? Do you know why you like me? Because of this. I learned this when I was in the sixth grade. Where's my sixth grade? All right, here we go. Put your hand down. Watch this. Here's what I learned in sixth grade. All of us are like most of us. I'm going to give it to you one more time. All, right, look at me. All of us are like most of us. Y'all got it? One more time. All of us are like most of us. Here's what that means. No matter how people look, no matter what they do, no matter if they can throw or shoot a basketball, there's something in their life that has absolutely messed them up. And somehow they found the courage and the strength to get over it, to walk through it, to become great like they are. But listen to me very carefully. Once you think somebody has no problems, you're fooling yourself. Because all of us are like most of us. Did y'all get it? That's the first time I ever said that in a public school. So y'all should take that home and write it down. Because I think if you get it, I'm going to use it again. But watch this. My mom cried for 10 minutes. Finally, my dad said, tell him. And when she spoke, my whole life changed. Here's what my mom said. I'm so sorry. I'm old because I'm not your mom. And my dad whispered, I'm not your father. I grew up with foster care my entire life. Then she said, you have a brother. His name is Keith. You have two sisters, and then Jenna. Your mom kept your brother. Your mom kept all your sisters, but your mama said that you were a mistake. And she hated the day that you were born. So she gave you away. But it's okay, you're with us now. It's all right, are you okay? And I said, I'm okay, mom. I'm just tired, I just wanna to go to bed, I'm all right. It was the first time I lied. But it wouldn't be the last. Hey, anybody ever lie about something? Then you gotta lie about that, and then you gotta lie about that, and then I'm, Hey, anybody ever look in the mirror and go, who the heck am I now? She can't keep this straight no more. Some of you are freaking out. Some of you eighth graders are going, why are people raising their hand? Here's why. Because most of us are like the rest of us. I ain't special. And I hate this part. Out of everything I say, I gotta tell you this. Y'all good? Can you handle it? 
from six years old to 13 years old. Every night when I went to bed, that voice in my head, anybody know what voice I'm talking about? That voice in my head said, your own mama don't want you. Your own mama don't want you. Your own parents gave you away. You don't belong anywhere. You're nothing. You're absolutely nothing. Hey, everybody look at me. There's value in every kid in this room. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what your mama said. I don't care what your daddy did. You have value. You have purpose. There's always going to be somebody in your life who will give you hope. And you know what I am? Nothing but hope. It's my favorite word in the dictionary, hope. You know why? H-O-P-E. With hope, anything is possible. But without hope, we're doomed. But as long as you're breathing, there's hope. Everybody breathe in. There's hope. Okay, breathe out. Don't pass out. Everybody look at me. I was 13 years old. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. I decided I didn't care no more. I was 13 years old. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. And I decided to give up on the gift of love. It's the saddest thing I have ever and will ever say in my life. I realized how to give, give up on life. And at 3 a.m. I started crying in my bed. And that's when it happened. My bedroom door opened. Look, if your bedroom door opens at 3 in the morning, run, okay? Because <laughs> you're in a scary movie. I don't like scary movies. Who loves scary movies? I hate scary movies. Put your hand down. You know why I don't like scary movies? I'm going to tell you the truth. And if you know I'm right, clap. This is not racial. It's the truth. In scary movies, black people die first. You know I'm right. Black. All right, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know I'm right, you know, oh by the way, it wasn't a clown, it was my foster care dad, he was a school janitor until the day he passed away, his name's Bill, everybody say Bill, Bill. oh by the way, Bill, he's my hero, straight up my hero, he walked in, he said, are you all right, I heard you crying, I said, how could you hear me crying? Your room's on the other end of the house. He said, son, every day you hug your mom. Every day. But for the past two days, you haven't hugged her. Every day you talk to me. But for the past two days, you've been so quiet. And you were so sad. I didn't tell you. But two nights ago, on my way home from cleaning the school, I decided I wanted to be close to you just in case you needed a friend. So for the past two nights, I slept by your door. And this morning, I heard you cry. What's wrong? All I said was, I don't know what to do. And he said that. I never call you Reggie. I'll always call you son. And I'll love you till the day I die. And he did. Look at me, kids. When I was in high school, I had to write poetry. I've written two poems my whole life. First poem I wrote was, Roses are red, violets are blue. I think you're ugly and I know your mama is too. <laughs> my teacher did not appreciate the work I put in that one. The next poem I wrote was for my grade. She said, it's got to be about your life. I thought about it, and this is what I wrote. Listen carefully. I wrote these words. I don't need to know your name to know your pain. I have my own. I don't need to know your home to know your shame. I have my own. But somebody love me. And hey, yo, hey, Greg. I don't know if you get this, but for the past 36 minutes, I've been sitting by your door. Hey, hey, sixth grade, you get it? You know me better now than you did when I started. Seventh grade, for you, the sixth grade and the eighth grade, I'm saying this to every person that can hear me, even the teachers, faculty, and staff. I just came today to tell you. And I love you. And if I could make it, you can too. Hey, everybody, hold on. You gotta understand, there's some kids they ain't never heard a day in their life. They just don't understand this. But there's a few of you brothers and sisters who are looking at me like, holy crap, this dude just dropped it on my lap. I know that's why I'm a motivationist. But you can only be good if you talk about what you know. And you know what I know? I know loneliness. I know sorrow. I know how to wear a mask and pretend everything's good when it's not. I know what it's like to wake up and not want to get out of bed. I'm glad I'm here today. But here's the deal. On your way to figuring out why you're on this planet Earth, help someone. Give someone that hope that I'm talking about. 
That's all I've been doing right now. And I need to teach you and show you how to give hope. Which leads me to my favorite song of all time. But I need everybody in this gym to help me with this song. So here's what I need you to do. Everybody look at Reggie. Take both things and put them like this. Here's what I need you to do. Point at somebody beside you. Now point at yourself. Now point to the sky. Let's do that one more time. Point at somebody. Point at yourself. Point at the sky. Now doing that is one thing, but putting words with it is another. Just put them up. Point at your neighbor. Look at them and say, don't you give up. <laughs> point at yourself and say, I won't give up. <laughs> put it up. Say, let me love you. <laughs> now we've got to say it in the words of my friend. Point at your neighbor. Trust me on this. Say exactly the way I said it. Look at your neighbor and say, don't you give up. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> say, I won't give up. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> say, let me love you. Oh, Y'all know what to do with this one. Oh, uh, yeah, snap. Everybody just snap with me. If you can't fake it, you know what to do. Next line was press 
president has three children. <laughs> let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> All right. His youngest son is named Vito, as you can tell they're Italian. <laughs> Vito has what he calls superpower. What that means in our terms is Vito is autistic. Now here's what you need to know about Vito. He in the 10th grade now. And he ain't never met a stranger. And he says he has a superpower. Because his job and it's simple. If he ever sees someone sad, he thinks and he believes it's his job to make their day better. Every Christmas, right before Christmas, I fly to New Jersey and I hang out and I do the Saturday before Christmas with Vito. We go to the mall and he gets a present for his dad, his brother and sister. And he looked at me one day at the mall and he goes, I'm like you, I'm like you, it's my fault. I said, what's your fault? Mom left dad, it's my fault. It's because I'm special. I said, no, no, no. That's not why that happened. I said, it wasn't your fault. I can't believe you. We're walking in the mall to get presents, and we always go to whatever cartoons playing at Christmas time. So we bought the presents, put them in the car, put them back in the mall to go to the movie theater. And he looked at me and goes, Uncle Rich, my spider senses are tingling. Which means he sees someone who's having a bad day. And now he's got to make their day better. You can't stop it. You just gotta let it play out. He starts walking, I'm right behind him. I'm checking out the whole mall. It's full, it's right before Christmas and before COVID, right? So I'm going, what the world is going on? And I saw a lady sitting on one of those benches in the mall and she's crying and she had tissue and she was wiping her tears. He walked straight up to her and he said, excuse me, ma'am, I know you don't know me, but you're way too beautiful to be so sad. What can I do to make your day better? And she went, oh my goodness, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said. Can I have a hug? He gives her a hug. She starts smiling. She says, thank you so much. We walk away. He looks at me and says, mission accomplished. <laughs> Preston called me the other day. He said, something happened to Vito at school. I said, no. He said he was waiting for his teacher, three boys who were seniors who didn't know him. They started making fun of him because he looked different. They would knock his books out of his hands. He'd pick them up. They'd knock them down. Whenever Vito gets scared or nervous, he gets loud, okay? So he started going, it's okay. It's okay. You can make fun of me. I like it when people are happy. It's okay. It's okay. But down the hall was a girl who went to school with Vito. She'd been around him ever since kindergarten. So she knew somebody was messing with him. And she wasn't having none of that. So when she came around the corner, she is starting to take off her earrings. I don't know if you kids understand that if you're talking. Oh, stop. Y'all do understand that in Kentucky. If a sister takes her earrings off, somebody gonna bleed. Clap your hands, you know what I'm talking about right now. Okay, y'all some violent children in this gym right now, okay? All of a sudden, she didn't even do, she didn't even say nothing to the boys making fun of Vito. Some of you like, why are you telling me this story? Because of what she said to Vito. Watch this. She walked up to Vito, took him by the hand, and she said this. Come with me right now. You deserve better than this. You deserve better than this. In my entire program, I've been saying this to every kid in this gym. Come with me right now. You deserve better. You deserve better. Well, you kids are so good. I decided to give you a bonus song. But in order to give you a bonus song, I have to have some people help me on the gym floor. And I know, I know, I love it. Kids volunteer in middle school. You should have seen the high school. They were ready to go. <laughs> but I just need a specific kind of person, so let me explain. There is a white line right there, right here on the gym floor, that white line. So if you are in this group of people, you just need to come and stand on the white line behind you. Would every 
Teacher, faculty, and staff person in the gym right now, please come down to the floor and stand on that white line behind you. Everybody, clap for your teachers right now. Give them a Oh, y'all got to clap better than that. Give it up for your teachers. Hey, excuse me, ma'am. I said teachers. Oh, snap, you look like 12. All right. I'm going to stop before I get in trouble. I'm just going to go, what the hell? All right, all right, all right. Keep getting younger and younger. Like they what are they twins? Alright. Alright, here we go, here we go. Alright, look! Everybody look at me. You have to do what the teachers do, okay? So teachers, here's what I need you to do. Raise your hand. Bring them down. Go like this. Do not dab. Don't <laughs> you did it anyway! Stop! Wiggle your fingers and go across the room. All right, point at yourself, point at the students, students point at the teachers. Cool. Let's do it one more time. Hands up, hands down. With point yourself. Cool, y'all ready? All right, before we do this song, I gotta say something. Everybody, touch your neighbor and say, this is good. Touch your other neighbor and say, this is real good. Um, Teachers, faculty, and staff, um, listen to me very carefully, very carefully. Um, even though my real mom gave me away, what she did was crazy good. My real mom gave me away to her favorite teacher at school. I was raised by my mom's school teacher. And her husband was the school janitor. Y'all want to go a little deeper? The reason I play saxophone so well, I have this thing called ADD, ADHD. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. So first of all, I'm real fidgety. I just been go for years and not sleep or nothing. But when I was eight years old, the teacher who raised me found out that music and rhythm can help guys like me calm down when I need to. So instead of medication, they brought me a saxophone. When I got fidgety, he said, play with the radio. And that's how I got this world on that. Also, I had a problem with dyslexia where I could read, but the words go backwards after about four or five pages. I get emotional when I say this. She read every book through college. She recorded everything I needed to get my degree. And when I played football at Tennessee, everybody thought I was listening to Tupac. I was listening to mom. And I graduated with a 3.65 GPA because of her. So I just wanted to say thank you. Boys like me become men like me because of teachers like me. Everybody look at me. If you have nobody to talk to at home and you need help today, do what I did. Find your favorite teacher, find your coach, do what you gotta do, let them help you, let them help you. Because I promise you they can. Oh, and they will. They'll move a mountain if they have to move. But they got to hear from you what you need. Do me one last time. Clap for your teachers. Stay right there. <laughs> Here's my last song. When I'm done with this song, it's going to be good. It's, it's old school, though. That's why I had to have y'all up here. These little babies ain't going to know this song. All y'all are going to know this song except for the 12 year old that teaches. I don't know what you teach. Everybody else is going to know this song. You ain't never going to let it down, girl. It's over, all right? So, one last time, y'all ready? Everybody, raise your hands. Break them down. Go across. Point at yourself. Point at somebody else. All right, cool. Hit that track. Everybody, here we go.